Hello and welcome to a very unique episode of Shadi Specialist. Our guest today is Purnia Qureshi, a fashion entrepreneur, a Kuchipuri dancer and a bride-to-be. We are going to steal all possible bridal secrets from her on this episode, so keep watching. Congratulations on your wedding. Thank you. And we've seen some very exciting pictures of your bachelorette in Mexico. Yes. So please give our viewers advice on what does it take to plan a fantastic bachelorette. Um, I, you know, honestly, I can't take uh, much credit for it. Um, I think the only thing you need to begin with is a location. I was quite um, clear that I wanted to go to Mexico. I love Mexican food and I just had never been. So it's always exciting to go somewhere new. And so I knew the location. So I told my friends that, okay, this is the location. And uh, now everyone figure it out. <laughs> so then that was like my contribution. So it worked out really well. It was a really big group of girls. And yeah, and these girls, like they researched restaurants and um, they found out like what are the best ones, they, they, they read reviews, um, they started making calls. So we, you know, we just could kind of like uh, figured where all our strengths are and just uh, put this whole thing together. I think it's always um, nice to have a great group of girls who everybody contributes something so you figure it out. Yeah. We will ask questions about your wedding later but I'm sure all our viewers want to know what is the uh, preparation with respect to your beauty and fitness regime for the wedding. I'm so stressed because um, it's coming up really soon but all I'm gonna do now is just try and eat healthy because that affects your skin a lot. I anyway drink a lot of water but I'm going to try not to stress. So last year saw a lot of celebrity weddings, yes. any that you found personally inspiring? Uh, let's begin with Sonam's. Because I was there, um, what I liked about her wedding was that her as a bride, she was not stressed, she was just so happy, she was like ecstatic. Like if you can be like that on your wedding day, those are goals, you know, of how she just was, you know, just her whole attitude and the way she was during her wedding, that was amazing. Uh, Deepika's wedding? Going somewhere beautiful is like is amazing if you can do that. Um, even in India, there's so many locations, but you know those, a few photos that came out from her um, her Lake Como wedding, it was small and it, it, she was in such a beautiful surrounding that everything is gonna be stunning. You don't need to do anything after that. All the photos are stunning. So I think that was beautiful that they went to a stunning location. Uh, Anushka. Anushka, like I said, like her, she, she just looked radiant. She looked fresh. It almost looked like she had no makeup on, but she had makeup on. It was this look where she just looked, I, I don't think she's ever looked more beautiful. And just for me, the way she looked and her outfit and makeup, especially makeup and hair, those were goals, amazing. All right, and uh, what about Priyanka's? It was really grand, historical location, it was a palace, and that palace has a really cool architecture. It was, I think, the last one of the last palaces to be built. Um, so I think, again, doing it in a place where it's, visually stunning and um, has great architecture will also give you amazing photographs and the scale you know everything in her photographs the scale was so big so I think um, that's amazing when you're choosing a location you can choose somewhere where like you know everything looks grand. Uh, last year's wedding calendar ended with Isha Ambani's wedding uh, what was the big takeaway from that? So from that I think the biggest takeaway is Beyonce <laughs> I mean if you can have Beyonce at your wedding then why not I mean uh, that was that much, that was so cool and I think the fact that she wore Indian designers, Beyonce wore um, local talent and I think that is super cool and I think um, I'm sure being there must have been just amazing, like a small private concert, like it doesn't get better. I mean of course if it's Beyonce she's an exception because Beyonce is Beyonce but um, I would say like in general like I don't think entertainment should be to a level where it takes away from what is going on. And I know a lot of people like do a lot of entertainment during their wedding, but I just feel like people forget why they're there. And um, I would never want the entertainment to overshadow my wedding, unless it's Beyonce. So, um, like I'm doing, like we have a few singers who I love, like we love beautiful music, and but I just don't want anything to overshadow. I think you just need a, 
a right mix of entertainment or the right dose of entertainment. Now, why don't you take us through some clothes yeah. that you reckon are in trend and some yeah. and would be great options for brides to be? For sure. So first, this is really heavy. This is a beautiful bridal outfit. Um, so basically, it's a chicken kari lehenga, and on top of that, we've done um, more uh, work with like pearls and sequins and some katana work, and it's. Um, Really beautiful, and I love the color. I'm a huge fa uh, fan of like soft pink. I think all girls look pretty in this color, especially Indian girls with like all shades of brown. Our skin color is very complementary to soft pink. Um, it has a gorgeous dupatta. I can show you. You can see it. It's um. It's stunning. Yeah, you can open it in fact and see it if you want. It's a it's a beautiful dupatta. It's lovely. Yeah. It's really so I pretty. mean, um, and I love the color. You yeah, like and like so it is something that girls are now opting for like softer. Um, softer silhouettes and softer colors. So another way to go, which I think is very chic, is um, is this whole Banarsi look. It's really simple and this is really beautiful again, even for a day wedding or even a, a, like another function, like the Sangeet or something. And because the lehenga is simple, you can go a little heavy on the jewelry. So I've just put together this set. Um, it's from one of our brands also, it's called Polki Box. There's a jhumar, you know, instead of a Instead of a um, tikka. tikka, you can do a really beautiful jhumar and that's also like kind of nice and on trend and something different, you know, that very nice old worldly look. Then the third look, I think for a cocktail now, a lot of people are doing like drape sardis. That's a huge trend with like um, a nice blouse and like tassels and those kind of like fun sleeves are a huge trend. So for something like that, I think for your cocktail, you could do a beautiful like tasseled blouse um, with fun sleeves and yeah, and it's something like a, like a beautiful drape sari and like a metallic would be beautiful for like a, a cocktail or a sangeet or even a reception, you know, you can opt for like a nice drape sari instead of um, a gown or a lehenga, which a lot of girls do. your personal experience tell us what are the various factors one needs to keep in mind while planning one's trousseau okay so I am gonna say something which is going to be earth-shattering I don't think you need a trousseau I think this whole concept of a trousseau is really outdated and um, it doesn't make sense anymore because I know that when you're packing and unpacking to go to a new house as it is you have so many things that you already love you should just pack what you already have in love and I believe you should just buy for all the occasions during your wedding. Because what happens with trousseau shopping is that you end up just buying things you don't need, you're not wearing currently. And by the time you want to wear it or need it, it's outdated and you, and you don't want it anymore. I think it's a big waste of money, honestly. Just buy what you need for your occasion. All right, and talking about occasion wear, what have you decided to put together for your wedding? I like things simple. Um, and I know if it's bridal, it has to be very dressy, but um, I think if you're going to um, have heavy accessories, the outfit should be a little more simple and vice versa, even for a bride. I think a super heavy outfit with lots of jewelry and a loud color is just too much. I think um, simplicity is like the new trend. I think you can be traditional, but still look um, very simple and beautiful. Like, like for example, like Anushka, you know, on her, on her wedding, um, she was dressed up, but there was something so soft and simple about her. And I think that's when you look beautiful because Everything is not overshadowing you. So I think that's what I have kept in mind. And um, hair and makeup also has a big part to play in this. Uh, don't wear makeup you've never worn before on your wedding. Do something which you know looks good on you, which is you know simple enough that your real features and face shows. Can't look like somebody else. Now, what advice do you have for people in terms of how can they wear their lehenga again in the future? Because it's a heavy and expensive garment which tends to be kept in the cupboard. Their bridal How can you recycle your bridal lehenga? A, if the dupatta is very heavy, make a lighter dupatta later. So then that way you don't have to um, worry about it. My um, my bridal outfit that I'm, that I'm making, um, I'm getting made, um, I did it in a way that it's a kameez and a, a, a garara skirt kind of thing. That later I, I I don't need a dupatta. I can just wear the top and the bottom, and it becomes a little more modern, you know. So you can a wear it without the dupatta, or if you if it's very traditional, then you will just need to change a, a very light dupatta, and you opt out of the heavy one. Usually wedding outfits you can only recycle to a very very close friend or like 
like family wedding because even if you go light how light can you go you True. know if you do like a beautiful brocade that you can wear everywhere you True. know so you can even choose something consciously choose something not to have so you can wear it later you know so you're investing in something that's worth it What is the thought process that you personally put in uh, on your wedding location, on the decor, on the invite, the things that tend to uh, trouble every bride? I don't know if I'm the best person to help people out because I like things really simple. I am not a fan of like those weddings where there's uh, like there's a lot going on and it's very colorful. Like you know, I think you should stick to one color palette. Like I'm not a fan of like this rainbow situation. That's just not my vibe. Um, so I think I've tried to keep it uh, really simple and I think with destination weddings the advantage is that you can go somewhere beautiful and if it's already a beautiful location like say you're on a mountain top if your surroundings are already so pretty then you don't have to spend money on decor these days we're in like a digital age nobody keeps invites nobody even looks at invites I feel I think it's very old school and outdated everyone sees invites on their WhatsApp so send a nice digital WhatsApp invite um, make it chic and beautiful, make very clear wear, location and dress code and everything and because that's what everyone's going to look at. My invite is literally a white envelope and card. Like it's just really simple and it just does the job because for me I know that it, there, it, it's pointless, you know, nobody keeps invites. Basically what every bride needs to take yeah. away from you is be simple and have a simple yeah. mood board and storyboard. Also like my fiance is very hands on and he's very much involved so I don't have anything to do, I just have to take care of myself which I haven't been doing which I'm going to start now. Thank you so much Purnia for Thank your time you. and I'm positive you'll have a beautiful wedding. Thank you. Thank you. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye. I hope you had your pen and paper with you to jot down all the tips that Purnia had to share. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.